You, she closed her Bible. See, she said, why, sure. He said, tell me why there is no God and that the Bible is full of fiction. Well, a little girl almost in tears sat there and thought a minute. This man here, he's an he's a educated fool. She thought to herself, she said, well, sir, let me ask you a question. She said, a rabbit and a cow and a horse, all three eat grass. She said, the little cow, the cow will excrete patties. The rabbit excretes little pellets. And then the horse drops little clumps. She said, sir, why is that when all three of them eat grass? Well, he thought for a minute and he said, well, young lady, I, I don't know. I don't have the answer. And she said, well, sir, if you don't understand what I just asked you, then why is it that you think that you could understand God in the Bible when you don't understand crap? I cleaned that up a little bit for the internet, all right? You have, are students of the Word of God. You understand the Bible. You've looked through it. I, I mean, not only that, some word has penetrated your heart. I never look at you as foolish people. I know you've been taught well. You understand it. You're gaining it. I don't want you to deviate from it as we move through these pandemics and protests and all the nonsense that are going on. I pray in the name of Jesus the chariot wheels come off of this pandemic. Amen. And just fall to the ground. That all the lies have been exposed. All the misunderstanding will be straight out that God your word will reign supreme and your people will rise up in righteousness and reclaim this nation in Jesus name and everyone said amen, amen. hallelujah Matthew 5 Jesus talking he says now when he saw the crowds he went up on a mountainside and he sat down and his disciples came to him and he began to teach them and he said blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are those who mourn they'll be comforted Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are you when you're pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Notice that verse 9, that verse 10 follows verse 9 here. The peacemakers, blessed are the peacemakers. Then he goes on to say, and blessed are those who are persecuted. Oftentimes when you're a peacemaker, you become persecuted. Oftentimes when you try to help keep the peace, you're the one that's going to get persecuted, the one that they go after. Blessed are you when people, uh, when people insult you, persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad. Because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus is reminding his disciples that the prophets before Isaiah were sawed in half in a, in a hollow tree trunk. He's reminding them that the prophets endured tremendous persecution. And he said, because of that, hey, you rejoice when you're going through it. So when I hear believers, particularly in America, acting like somehow we're being persecuted, I got to remind you of the book. Amen. We ain't gone through it. And when we do, how are we going to go through it? How are we going to handle this thing? So, God, I pray your, your Jesus gets bigger in you. Amen. Hallelujah. As we move through life. God bless you. Wave at one another one more time. Be seated. What Jesus was talking about here is attitude. Everybody say attitude. Oh, there is nothing more powerful than your attitude. I saw your attitude when you walked in. I did a, you know, the funeral this week, and everybody was wearing masks at the funeral. Everybody wearing masks. You know how hard it is to preach to everybody wearing masks? And you can't tell if they're smiling. You can't tell if they're mad at you. And then all of a sudden, I had to start reading the eyeballs to see if, I, if that was a good word as I was talking to them. But one thing I could still pick up on, even with the mask on, I could see attitude. I picked up, but you are your attitude, and your attitude is you. It dictates your response to the present. And determines the quality of your future. It's your attitude. How you, and I'm telling you, what has gone on over the last six months has affected our attitudes. It, it, it is actually, let me just say but straight up, it exposed our attitudes. 
Amen. It showed what, who we were and what we were. So we had to start saying, okay, God, help me adjust this. Amen. It determines your success or failure in any venture in life. My friend, attitude is more powerful than wealth, beauty, title, social status. It can make beauty ugly and homeliness attractive. It opens and closes doors for you. It's attitude. Then Jesus laid down attitude in the B attitudes. The distinguishing factor between a winner and a loser is attitude. The word attitude literally means the mindset that determines our interpretation or the response to our environment. When something happens around us, how do we respond to it? It's our way of thinking. It's an inward feeling expressed by behavior. Amen. You're going to know. It won't be long. All you got to do is poke the bear to find out what kind of attitude he's got. Right. Amen. It's important. I don't, you don't have to smile at me. I got people watching me online at the end of this right now. They're yelling at me with their Cheetos yelling, go preaching. <laughs> Listen. Over the last few weeks, we spoke on peace. We talked about Peter being in prison and how that he had to be awakened by the angels to go out. Even though he was uh, going to be executed the next day, he's sleeping all night. We spoke about Jesus saying he came to divide humanity. Amen. And he didn't come to bring peace but a sword. And when you read that, you think, okay, he said, be no peace. But he also said, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives, but as I give. And then he turns around and calls us peacemakers. That in our world, that we can make peace. How many know peace is a wonderful thing? Amen. It, it's contentment manifested. When you have peace, it's it just something about it. And last week we talked about trees. Hallelujah. That if you cut one of us, I got 59 circles in me. And all of those rings share failures. They share success. They share all kinds. Like a tree planted by the waters. They bring forth their fruit in due season. Everybody say due season. In other words, we ain't always prosperous all the time. But every now and then the season hits just right, and here it comes. Here comes faithfulness. Because we've been faithful, God brings forth fruitfulness in our life. So my goal this morning is to affect your attitude toward being a peacemaker. Everybody say peacemaker. peacemaker. Look at your neighbor and say he's talking about you today. <laughs> Amen. He's not talking about me. He's talking about you today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know where the truth is, Jamie. Uh-huh. Look over here. Watch me. Don't look at her. Amen. It starts with the mama. I love you. And it ends with the mama. Ooh. <laughs> this is what it says here. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will become, they will be called the sons of God. Now, again, when we understand sons, we also know it's talking about daughters. But the word here is maturity. Uos. It's being mature. I was brought up with what I call the fellowship of the fist. We didn't understand peace coming up. I mean, when you deal with, you know, bootlegging and country folk and, and uh, uh, Hatfields and McCoy kind of attitude, revenge, taking revenge, you lived your whole life in bitterness and, and meanness, and, and you're always thinking about that. So as a young man raised up on Wheeler Mountain, usually when the football team practiced almost like a sacrament, the boys in my school went out to war. Immediately, there would be a fight. Almost every day after football practice, there was a fight. It was what we did instead of talking. You may say it was a, an intimacy by another means. And that fellowship would take place usually at New Bethel Junior High. And it'd be back behind this uh, uh, propane tank that we had there. The teachers couldn't see us. And, and though they could hear us agging one another on, the fighters squared off, everyone gathered around, and, and began making a man-made ring, and we'd jostle and jeer, and the fighters went at it in a wild, flaying, tribal dance of fear and anger. Never like the movies. It's always usually over in seconds. Very seldom lasted a minute. It was just swinging as fast as you could and praying to God you hit something. I remember I got in a fight with a young man who had a very hard head. I carried the, the, uh, the malformed knuckle from hitting that head. We went after it, and it was all over my bicycle, Ruby, that my mother had got me by saving S&H green stamps. Some of you have not remembered that there used to be stamps you could get. And she filled out so many books, and when she got up 50, 60 books, she said, what do you want? I said, I want a Ruby red mo uh, bicycle. Because my friend had a, had a bicycle. I wanted a bicycle. And here I was, 10, 11, 12 year old. Amen. I finally got a bicycle. And I loved that bike, man, because my mom earned that thing with S&H green stamps. And when this young man hit the back end of my bike and bent that back tire, it was the fellowship of the fist. It was on like Donkey Kong. Man, we fought. And did you know by the next day we were friends again? 
That's how life was. But very few times did any of my friends ever enter into a fight and try to break it up. We didn't understand peacemakers. We didn't understand the Word of God. We didn't understand that it was important to keep peace in the area. The Scripture says, blessed. Everybody say, blessed. Blessed are the peacemakers. In truth, very few folk like peacemakers. How many of you have I said, how many of you love referees? We hate to kill the ref. Amen. I coach uh, high school basketball and junior high basketball. I can't tell you how many times I got technicals on me. I can't tell you how many times I turned my chair backwards and refused to look at the game. And the ref would call a tech on me, kick me out of the game. And I wouldn't say a whole lot. I was just against bad calls. We don't like peacemakers. Hello. It's not something we're fond of. Jesus could have left that one out. We can handle mercy. We can handle meek. We can handle those that mourn. But not peacemakers. Don't tell us to be that way. It's a messy mission. Peacemaking is wrenching work. It's often resented. We despise peacemakers at the very moment we need them most. And I will tell you, let's just throw in a little caveat here. Lawyers are not peacemakers. (laughs) No, they're necessary profiteers of civil wars. That's what lawyers are. They, they, they differ in that. But a peacemaker, it's not about them making money. Usually they lose something when they step in. Yet, blessed. It's a, a commendation for reconciliation. Blessed are the peacemakers. They're going to be called sons, mature sons, able to restore peace. Takes wisdom and patience. And we work for peace on three levels. First, peace with God. Romans 5, we talked about it a little bit last week. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. You cannot be a peacemaker if you're not at peace. If you're full of anger, if you're full of envy, if you're full of resentment, if you're full of uh, anxieties, you can't, you can't give peace to anybody else. You've got to get, take care of that first. And once that's over with, now you can be at peace. And I have watched our nation tore apart by people protesting and rioting. And nobody wants to step in and be peacemakers. Nobody wants to step Everybody wants to be a part of the agitation. They want to be a part of the irritation. But where are the peacemakers? And I, I know I can't reach all the way around the United States. Perhaps somebody will listen to me. But I believe you do. And that you get, first of all, let me know you need peace in your family. That's hard enough. Woo! I just, every now and then, I want to carry a flag and just throw a flag. I want to penalize people. Since we ain't got sports, we might as well start it back up in our families. Peace within, Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. One of the signs of being born again, having faith in God, is having peace. The Message Bible says, Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. And that's what we need. Settle us down, Lord. Amen. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Peace, again, is contentment manifested. Peace with others, Romans 12, 18. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, who's it depend on? Who's it depend on? Say it again. Who's it depend on? Me. So as far as you can, that I'm not, this is the words of God. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Next verse. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. Amen. If it is, and I know that word, if it's possible. It's, it, sometimes it's not possible. Some folk will not let you live at peace. Some neighbors won't. Some family won't. Uh, some politicians won't. They want to keep stirring things up. Nobody wants peace. Amen. I need peace in my life. I want you to have it in yours. It, you know, if you've, the scripture says in the message here, if you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. God will take care of the judge and I'll take care of it. So be at peace. I believe in order to be at peace with the maker, you've got to be at peace first. Amen. The first function of the fruit of peace is to prevent the hearts of God's people from being troubled. God don't want us so troubled. That's why I said I quit watching the news. You don't have to go through life so troubled. Uh, Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. To keep. To keep with military guard. When a believer's life becomes busy and loud, there's usually an absence of peace. People say to me all the time, they'll call me, I know you're busy, Pastor. I am not busy. I chose years ago to quit being busy. I don't want to be busy. Busy is for busy people. 
I, I'm, not, I'm extremely effective. I get more done. But don't call me busy. Busy my being under Satan's yoke. B-U-S-Y. I don't want to be that way. I don't want to always be burdened by other things that are going on. I got to keep my peace, man. That's important. So when there's an absence of peace, Matthew chapter 24, this is the irony. This morning, I'm on my way here, and I'm calling my pastor. You know that. I'm talking with Pastor Mike. He did a wedding yesterday. He looked quite dapper. Saw the picture. Amen. And I said, what you preaching on? He said, Matthew 24. I said, well, how about that? So am I. I like when, when small minds think alike. Can I get an amen? I'm saying that in case he's watching. Hallelujah. Matthew 24, verse 3, Jesus said, And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, so here he is talking to the people again, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us then what shall these things be and what shall be the sign of your coming and at the end of the world. Have y'all noticed how much talk has been about the end of the world lately? About Jesus coming again? Isn't it funny that these bad things have happened all over the world for a thousand years and everybody thought Jesus was coming, but finally when it happened in America, all of a sudden we decided we, we would wake up and say, think maybe Jesus is coming. Have y'all figured that out yet? Amen? Now watch this. When shall these things be? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars, rumors of wars. See to it that you're not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. The end is not yet. People have asked me, Pastor, what about this mark of the beast? Do you think this virus is going to lead to a to something that's going to, we can't buy or sell us. I have seen every, about every video. Don't watch them all. I watch them from people that, that I like. Everybody sends me stuff, okay? I don't mean that mean if that's you to send it. Don't ask me if I watch your video. Um, but I've watched a lot of them. And I can tell you this, some of them sure make good sense. Man, I mean, it, it, you call it conspiracy you want, but they really make good sense. We, we are heading toward the last days. I can sense it. I pick up on it. But, but when I'm reading this, I think to myself, there are certain things that are going to happen whether you try to stop it or not. Amen. We are heading to a cosmic end. Amen. Jesus is coming again. The world is a mess. The church has got to get brighter. We got to be less troubled. If people are looking for peace, I'm, look, I'm looking for people that have peace in their life because those are the ones I hang out with. Have you found out when you hang out with a brother that ain't troubled all the time, you ain't troubled all the time? Amen. When you hang out with, 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 with upset, always bothered, uh, uh, you know, confounded this, the toaster, burnt the toast again, you know, it's because you left it in too long, you know, and I always mad about something, this, that, and the other. You, those kind of people drive me nuts. I can't hang out with them. Amen. I don't care if it's even in my family. I walk away from it for a little while. I just got to get away. That's why God gave me a Harley. Mm -hmm. Amen. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse or different places. And these are the beginning. These are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now, again, I know he's talking to the disciples, but he's also talking to us about what would happen in the end, at the end time. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, and they shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. I have never seen so much betrayal in my life. That's people pointing fingers. We got people, you know, look. If, if, if the brother don't want to wear a mask, just keep your mask on and keep your mouth shut and walk on. Amen. If you do want to wear one, then wear one. And that's just the mask stuff right now. Wait till this thing keeps on going. Because the dominoes are falling in the negative. That's why we need the chariot wheels to come off. Amen. So they fall in the negative. So, but, but here, we start to betray one another. We start to turn one another in. And, and I, for the life of me, I'll be honest with you. I know I'm on air. I know I'm being recorded. But I don't like this tracing. And I don't like this tracking. I don't like somebody. Listen, if you gave me the flu, then, I, then who knows who, where I got it from. I, mean, I don't know if I got it going to Walmart or over here at uh, Stop and Stab or, or anywhere else I've been. I don't, I don't know where I got this from. Why do we have to try to trace it back and make everybody's life hell? Amen. So I, I say leave that alone. I, just, I, I know of churches, they come in and try to, to try to get everybody's name so they can figure out if everybody... It, 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 and everything is COVID. Sick of it. Sick of it. Tired of it. 
My pastor said today, I, I thought he's funny because he's not as, as radical as I am. He just, because he helps keep me balanced. But he said, I'm getting to the place where I'm defiant. <laughs> I said, you go ahead, pastor. I got a 90-something-year-old man out in the other campus. Many of y'all know Mr. Jackson. He keeps coming to church. He's there every Sunday. I said, Mr. Jackson, what are you doing in church? He said, I'm too old to stay home and stay incubated. I ain't doing that, man. He said, I ain't got much life left. I don't know if I'll make it to 100 or not, but I sure ain't going to sit home and make, wait on it. Come on. Many false prophets shall rise, shall deceive many. And because of iniquity, iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. My heart. It's toward your heart. And sermon, we don't wax cold. That our hearts don't get cold. Because what happens is we keep hearing this. That's why we need the Word of God. It keeps our heart plowed up. It keeps it from getting too, too dry, too, too stiff. Amen. I don't want to see us wax cold, to be waxed over. Amen. Don't want that to happen. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end will come. This gospel will be pre Do you know when Jesus is coming again? He told us! He told us! He said, it ain't got nothing to do with the virus or who wins the election in November. I tell you when I'm coming again. When this gospel has been preached to the ends of the world, then I'm coming again. That's why we send missionaries. That's why we believe God for people that have never heard the gospel. You think you're the only ones that have the right to enjoy the grace and the mercy of God to be invited into the kingdom by the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Do you think we got to hold on to this and not support our missionaries and love people and preach the gospel around the world? No! I want Jesus to come again. I yeah. want Him to be excited about coming again. I want the church world to be ready for Him. I want to see us become peacemakers no matter how much it takes. And you've got to be at peace before you can do it. Come on. Amen. You've got to be at peace. Blessed are. Bless. Well, you hear that word blessed? That's that Old Testament stretching forth the hand of the elderly father over the children to bless them and saying whatever mine is yours. I earned it, but you're getting it by grace. I walked through the desert to get it, but you're getting it by mercy. Amen. I'm going to bless you. Who else? You're a mature child now. Now go and be peaceful. And treat other people in peace. Amen. Sometimes we forget what it could cost. to Be a peacemaker. There was a blind girl who hated herself because she was blind. She hated everyone Except a very kind and loving boyfriend. He was always there for her. She told her boyfriend, If I could only see the world, I would marry you. One day someone donated a pair of eyes to her. When the bandages came off, she was able to see everything. It was so beautiful, including her boyfriend. He asked her, Now that you can see the world, will you marry me? The girl looked at her boyfriend, and she saw that he too was blind. The sight of his closed eyelids shocked her. She hadn't expected that. The thought of looking at them the rest of her life led her to refuse to marry him. Her boyfriend broke down, left in tears. And days later, sent a note to her saying, Take good care of my eyes. For dear, those were once mine. When I think of the grace, the mercy, the peace, the love, the joy that I have, it was given to me. Given to me. I didn't earn it. And through that, I have seen the world. So I keep going back to this book. I love you, church. I want you to stay in this book. I want you to work on your attitude. I want you to believe God for the best in your life. You know, every week I just say, virus free. Just going to keep believing God for it. And anybody I know who's gone through it, I say, God, help them recover in Jesus' name. But the bottom line is, these bodies are going to wear out one way or another. And I'll still be doing funerals. And one day, you, hopefully, if you're still here and I'm gone, you'll come to mine. You ain't got to. I won't hold it against you. I won't be here. You can stay seated.
Heads bowed, eyes closed. The human brain often works when our status changes. Only a very few remember that life was like before. I remind myself of the poverty I came from. I just, and to some it was, po- to me it was not poverty. When I look back, I say, yeah, I was, we were poor. But I thank God for that. Because if you don't remember where you came from, you forget. And you take advantage of the blessing that you've had in life. Before you say an unkind word, think of someone who can't speak. and Be a peacemaker. Before you complain about the taste of food, think of someone who has nothing to eat. Be a peacemaker. Before you complain about your husband or wife, think of someone who's crying out to God for a companion because they lost theirs. Be a peacemaker. Today, before you complain about life, think of someone who went too early to heaven. Before whining about the distance you drove to church today, think of someone who has to walk. And when you are tired and complain about your job, think of the unemployed, the disabled, and those who wish they had one. And when depressing thoughts seem to get you down, put a smile on your face and think, Jesus, you're alive, still here, and still full of purpose. And whenever you can, as best you can, be a peacemaker. If you've been away from God, would you just put your hand up right now and let me pray for you? Amen. There's some hands in the house. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Amen. Let's pray this together. Thank you, sir. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Flood my life with peace. All the right attitudes. Take away anger, bitterness, resentfulness. Amen. God, help me to walk as a child of God. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want to serve you and prepare for your coming as best I can. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise in this house. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are, blessed are, blessed are. I just, I, I love what Jesus. He sat down with them disciples. You know why he told them that? Here's the, here's the unique thing. He told them that in Matthew five. By the time we get to the end of Matthew, Peter's got a sword out and cutting Malchus's ear off. What I'm saying is, in all our lives, we can hear the word of God, but there are still times that whoops, it just slipped right from us. Don't beat yourself up. Get back on the wagon. Amen. Keep believing God for the best. Can I get an amen? Amen. There should be some envelopes there in, uh, inside your, or on the pews.